If you knew that one belief eliminated from your brain could change the course of your reality, would you want that? It's not for everyone, only the brave. Those who want to own their life like the powerful leaders they were born to be. A pivotal moment can change everything. Now, here is the host of Crossroads to Awakening show, Wendy Paquette. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Today is the most beautiful day in November. Uh, in like coming into fall and it is 70 degrees outside in southwestern Ontario. It's amazing and beautiful and welcome and thanks for being here. Today's show is going to be really fun and let me tell you I'm going to really dive deep into this because it's my zone of genius. So before we get started I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. This show is the Crossroads to Awakening show and I am Wendy Pocket your host. I'm a holographic mind reprogrammer helping humans shift their perspective, awaken to their true selves, and change the world from where they stand. Because I believe as a high frequency human, how you see your reality is exactly the reflection of the programs that you have in your brain. They're totally etched in there. And those programs can be changed, much like programs out in the world, programs on a computer, all things can be changed. And if you knew that, what aspect of your life isn't working that you'd like to change? So welcome to the Crossroads to Awakening. Let's look at where your awakening can occur, or maybe you haven't even noticed that it was happening. So I'm here to support you and pointing it out. So let's begin. Today's show is called How to See Your Own Limitations and Break Them. Let's just go right into it right away, because why wait, right? We only have so many years, so many days, hours, seconds on this planet we get to make the best of it and if something's not working that's a limitation because it causes you to pause in your moment and not access what you really really are after right you feel stopped and blocked in that moment so let's dive in what we want to first do is I'm going to speak into what is a limitation right what is a block right and how do we even identify one like what does it look like and how would you know that you were blocked So let's look at that first. A limitation or a block, you can call it whatever you want. The name is like interchangeable in this instance with your reality because it's something that's stopping you from having something that you want. Now, it might not look like you're after something and it's blocking you in that way, like big, you know, red sign saying, stop, you can't go here. It's not one of those. It's in the moment that you're trudging through the day and you're say you have a business and you're in your business and something comes up and it causes you to have an emotional reaction to it so it's not like something comes up let's just say we're working with uh you know uh, uh, an assistant of some form and something comes in their fate their show it pointing out something to you that's not working and instead of going okay great it's not working I'm going to look into that well you know I'll see what the problems are and then correct them what if she points out something that's she's noticing that's not working and you instantaneously have an emotional response to it instantaneously you feel frustration you feel irritation how could they say that why are they pointing out to me you feel like you're being judged All these negative emotions come up. And when I say negative, I mean anything below neutral that comes up for you. You're now identifying a limitation or a block because what's happening in that moment is you're having a reaction, a negative reaction to someone's words, right? Someone's words. So we get to get really simplified in this process of understanding when you're blocked by something, it's an it, the moment is an emotional response to your reality, an emotional response to your reality. That means that a person or uh, something you've run into, like, and usually it's a person, I'm just going to go there. <laughs> a person shows up in your world, has something to say, and you respond negatively with emotions. That to me is a limitation or a block because that emotion, when it's underneath neutral and it's, it's some type of negative, irritation, frustration, anger, uh, disappointment, judgment, whatever it looks like, when it doesn't feel good, there's a reason that indicator is present for you because what it's showing you is a magical key. So we're going to keep, you know, 
defining the limitation zone so you can understand that clearly. We can look at many ideas. It could just be maybe your kids come and they bother you at the one time that you're really deep into your work and you're in your flow and you're going for it and they knock on the door and they don't stop knocking on the door and you have to stop what you're doing to open up the door to find out that what they're asking for is if they could have a drink of water, right? Something that they, you know, they can get themselves and they have complete you know, capability of getting it for themselves. But somehow after you told them a million times that mom's at work or dad's at work at home, don't, you know, don't knock on the door, don't disturb, they still do it. And instead of allowing the door to open and addressing their issue, you go into a space of an emotional response, which is a negative under neutral. So in some type of negative response, I call those blocks or limitations, they're locks, how ironic, limitation in a block together, a lock. (laughs) What that looks like is it's something that's causing you to come out of your flow and into a position of pause, right? Because now you're managing not just the situation, but you're managing you. You've got an emotional response that you got to manage because that will take you right out of your now into a new now of impossibility, How could you possibly get back into the flow and keep going and know where you're at and like, you know, have that flow continuous if you've been taken out of your flow to feel irritation, anger, frustration, you know, you name the list, it can go on and on. Not because you don't love your kids, not because they have stuff going on and they want your attention, but because for some reason that moment caused an emotional response right? So that we'll call it, we're going to call it what it is. That block of limitation is a lock. We're going to call it that from now on. I've coined it here. Um, That lock is going to either stay there and cause you to take time out of your day in order to manage it. Or you can notice it and go, wow, what's that about? Right? Run into the space in your mind where you're going, you know what? Every time I'm interrupted or every time I'm interrupted in anywhere in my life, I have that same emotional response. Right? So I'm locked in that spot in that program. I'm locked in the program that's literally upsetting my flow. Is that making sense? I'm hoping I'm landing this with you all. So you're looking at a block or limitation or our new word lock, right? Not a new word in the world, but a new word for this work. You're looking at that going, man, if that didn't occur, my flow would keep going and I'd be still joyful and I'd be in it and I'd be, you know, getting stuff done. Now, why I'm landing this limitation is because limitation and blocks happen all day long for some people where they just can't get ahead of themselves. They just can't go to the gym. They find they're like stuck in their space of, I need to get this done so they're behind time or they're not able to catch up. There's all these places where you create your own lock in reality that has you not moving, right? In your perception, not moving. Scientifically, everything's always moving, but this one particular thing and, and, I say one with tongue in cheek because there are a lot of programs in your mind that you bought or in your brain that you've bought that aren't actually serving you. But the one that stands out the most will be the one thing that you get to shift. Now, that is the limitation, right? The lock or the block in there where you can write it down and say, you know what? Every time I'm interrupted, I have this response, X, Y, Z. I get frustrated. I get out of my flow. I get angry for no reason. I get irritated, right? It feels like that one small thing causes an eruption of negative emotion. And, you know, that can go. Like I could do without that response to an interruption. I could do with the flow, continuing flow of, you know, getting the door and managing the kids or managing whatever that interruption was and keep going and be in flow. But what is it that stops us and why? Right? So that's, what we're going to speak into. Everyone has a program in the brain. Everyone has a program that runs the reality. It's a holographic nature. It's an energetic expression that we all have that once you identify it can be changed as simple as that. So we're, we're going to lean in 
and out of what the limitation, the block or the now lock looks like in a lot of ways, how you respond to it, how you identify it and what that indicator means for you. So I believe I landed with that what that could look like or feel like. And the number one key is it's an emotional response. You're having a negative emotional response to an everyday experience. It could be anywhere, but it's usually in your regular everyday experience that something comes up and throws you off your track, right? So note that limitation or that lock or that block. What you want to do is write it down, right? It's almost like I'm not a huge proponent of journaling just because I don't, I don't like to put pen to paper to write uh, my thoughts out. I'm a list maker, totally different, right? Whatever that looks like, for me, it would be a list. This is what irritated me today, X, Y, Z. If you're, you love to write, you love to journal, and that's something you do regularly, write it out. Today, when the kids knocked on the door from the office, I really got irritated. And keep track of you know, the things that come up, because I'm going to tell you why. By the time we get to the end of this show, you're going to know how to identify all of your blocks, your limitations or your locks, as well as how to change them, like how to unlock them. So let's lean back in. We've got, we're writing down our limitation. We're writing down our lock, right? Where we get stuck, our block. And now we're noticing it. So we're going to put our mind with the reticular activating system on the fact that we're going to notice all the things that come up that have a negative response, not to place negativity in your life by noticing it, but to unlock it, right? The key is unlocking those blocks, right? So the first thing is being able to identify it. If you can't identify one, how will you ever change it, right? It's like living your life with, through the, the statement of what, uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different response is the definition of insanity. Why would you want to continue on like that if it's bothering you? Most humans are craving peace and love and connection. So if you'd like to shift what's not working, you get to be able to identify it. And right, I've heard before, and I'm going to air quote this, name it and claim it right? Or claim it and name it, whatever it looks like. Because once you've got it in your hand, once you've identified it, there's the easy step of, of being able to let it go, like flip the switch on it so that it no longer affects you. So now we have this irritation, right? We're stepping into uh, our workday. We're going about our business. Kids knock on the door because they're supposed to be doing their schoolwork or they have a break and they're coming in, you know, into the office area, knocking on their door, disrupting you from your day. Your instantaneous response is be irritated and frustrated. How long do you think after you've managed whatever they're asking, will it take for you to realign yourself back into place? If there's ever such a thing of going back, which I don't believe, I don't believe that program that I've said is that you can never go back. You can only course correct yourself. How long do you think it will take you to course correct yourself into a space where you are feeling flow again, right? You can manage yourself by noting the time. You know what? It's 2.13 PM. I'm going to breathe and take a moment and intend myself and get myself back into flow. It might take you five minutes, which is great. It might take you 10 minutes. You may never get back into flow, right? But you get to notice how powerful that moment is when you're knocked out of off your track into somewhere else, because that limitation could be the one thing that changes the trajectory of where you're headed. And it, there's multiple ways. Like you can look at it from relationships. Believe me, your family members are the best people in the world to show you where your locks are, to show you where that lives in your brain because they will continuously pull that button, right? They'll push the, push the button, pull the button, pull the lever, push the button. They will poke the bear. They're gonna do everything, not on purpose, but it seems like they'll have every way to push you off your track. It's not because they want to. And it's not because they can. I know that was somebody's first response. It's because on 
in your program, the one person who stands before you, who's willing to be the person to irritate you is the one person while you're irritated, loves you more than you love you in that moment. I know that sounds odd, but it's the one person who would put their hand up and say, hey, don't worry, I got you. I'll show you your limitation. Just let me, you know, be in your life. And so that piece right there is really powerful because when you get that your limitations are in existence and your blocks or your locks and you can identify them and you're pinning it on a person because they cause it, you get to take away the victim that they're doing it to you and own, oh my goodness, look at what they're being for me in this moment and own their presence because it's love. It's pure love in that moment. So we're going to walk into a break right now. When we come back, we're going to go to the next step. What happens after you've identified this block? And we're going to name it in that space. And we're going to do things that will blow your mind to understanding what's truly possible in your reality. That's why we're here together. That's why you're listening to this show. And that's why I get to deliver these beautiful bits of information in order to shift your perspective, to own your reality and the programs that are in it and get everything that you've ever wanted. So we will be right back. You're listening to the Crossroads to Awakening show on the Inspired Choices Network. And I'm your host, Wendy Pocket. We will see you in a minute. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the crossroads to awakening. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. Okay, so we've identified a bit of a pathway on how you can see your limitations or your blocks or your locks. And what you get to know is once you've noticed a pattern that you get triggered, I guess is a good word to say, by certain things that occur in your reality, the next step is identifying, and I would say it's almost always a person that's creating this to show it to you. So let's let's use that example 100%. We're going to look at people because there's situations that create, you know, limitations and blocks as well. However, today we're going to just speak about people because we're in a world of humans. <laughs> we get to look at what's actually occurring in our life and how it shows up for us and how we can change it. So now that you've got a limitation and we're just going to keep going with that, you know, the kids, they knocked on the door and they irritate you instantaneously, but you do manage what they're up to because you're, you know, you get to, and then you're back to your world and you're trying to get back into the flow that you're in while you're at work and you're struggling with that. The one thing that you get to know is the pause. You get to pause and identify the kids that showed up and they're your kids. I'm going to just like put that example out there. What were they being? What were they being in the moment that they were knocking on the door to ask you for a glass of water that you know that they could get for themselves? What was the instantaneous trigger in your mind that caused them to be so irritating to you? And so we're going to lean into that. What were they being? There's 
many, many things that they could have been being, but I'm going to throw out a couple examples. Maybe they were being uh, ignorant. You told them a hundred times, why don't they listen? Right. Or maybe they were just being, they were ignoring you. They were ignoring everything you said. They, they don't even care that you put that rule into place. They don't know why. And they just didn't hear you. Right. So maybe they're just being complacent. Or what else could there be? What other things could they be? They're being irritating or they're being, what could they be? Right. Think of all the things, the ways of being you. I'm saying examples. You're going to know right out the gate what that is. If someone knocked on the door right now while I was doing the show after I told them that I wanted the silence of the door not being knocked, I would think how ignorant just let's just, you know, let's just use a way of being what you get to know now selfish. Yeah, Jen, that's a good one. She wrote in the chat selfish. If they're being selfish, I'm going to use yours. What you get to identify with that way of being, because when that comes up, you know it. There is one word, one or two words, but usually just one. That way of being that they're being, now hear me when I land this, is a lie that you bought about yourself. Okay? So whatever they're being in the moment they're being it, so save selfish, that is a lie that you bought about yourself. You bought that you are selfish, right? And whatever that comes up for you, like maybe you don't care about what other things people think, or maybe someone said you're selfish. That's where the bot program comes from. You might've been doing something out of the world and someone said, hey, you're so selfish. And for one second, you thought, oh my gosh, I am. Maybe I am. That's you buying a program. Suddenly you're thinking that you might be selfish and now you're looking for it. Now what's going to happen is when you buy a program, you're going to see it everywhere, <laughs> no matter where you look. So it might, it's not just the kids that are being selfish at the door. Everywhere you go, you're going to go to the grocery store now. You're going to be in the line and someone's going to come along. And now there's these crazy lineups because of the pandemic. You got to stand 50 feet away from the lineup or one of the actual places that you go to put your groceries on the conveyor belt. Someone might come along, not paying attention, whatever, just walk in and walk in line and go right up to the counter without even noticing you standing in the line. And you're thinking, how selfish. They just go in there. Now you see where you've seen it the second time. First is with the kids. Now you're at the grocery store and someone just cuts in line in front of you and doesn't even think about you they're being selfish, right? Where else are you going to see it? Maybe with your spouse or your friends, only caring about themselves, don't care that you had a birthday party planned for three months and suddenly they want to plan a dinner that night with someone else. And you have to remind them with irritation that you had plan this plan for three months. How selfish are they that they don't care? They just want to do their own thing. Wherever you look, throughout your life, you're going to see this same program showing up everywhere. You want to talk a lock. That's got a lock on your life. You're going to see that you're not going to identify those things individually as you're going. You're just going to get irritated and frustrated because what occurs is whenever you discover that program or whenever they're being that, you have an instantaneous emotional response to it. It doesn't matter what the, you know, response is, irritation, frustration, anger, judgment, uh, whatever it looks like, anything under neutral in a negative zone, that is an identifier of your program, right? The more intense your experience, like your, your triggered emotional experience is of that program, that way of being, the bigger the program is and the more uh, like, I want to say like spider legs, it is through your life, through your, through everything you do. It's just got a real good hold on everything. That's how deep programs can go. And they could be small programs in the sense of your, the level of emotional response you have. And some can be like flat out, you are perfectly fine. You went to instantaneous lose your shit. 
right? For anything. Like we're talking, you know, outside of your normal way of being, suddenly you become something that you know you're not. And often you might even wonder like, wow, where did that come from? How did I even go to that place so quickly? I was so happy. And you, you can even call yourself like, wow, it, it felt bipolar in a sense, right? You're going to go to the extreme of, I don't even understand. I was doing my thing or I was standing in line and suddenly this person decided, didn't even look at me, got in line. And I was so triggered that I wanted to throw my bag of groceries. I don't know. Like I'm making it up, but you get the gist. When you have an emotional response to somebody else, you're identifying a way of being in someone else. And that way of being is a, in my words, bullshit lie you bought about yourself. That is the program that you bought. So if we're talking about Jen who put in there selfish, you would buy, you are identifying where you bought a program that you are a selfish person. That's what you're identifying. Such a simple process to understand, right? So what do you do now? You're like, oh my goodness, selfish. You get to write that down. Like you're going to identify all these programs because imagine, look into the future of your reality. If you had, I mean, there's millions of programs in there, but you don't know what you bought until you get to identify it. What if that program did not exist, right? What if it didn't exist? What would happen? You would just, so say you were in line at the grocery store and the person like didn't see you and they went in line. You're like, oh, well, well, whatever. Now someone behind you (laughs) might have that program and show up with an emotion, but you don't, you don't really care. Not because you shouldn't care, but because you didn't buy the program that you're selfish, right? You didn't buy that program. So you don't have it or you've cleared it and you used to have it and you no longer do. Right? So there's, that's just one simple example of what it could look like as your programs show up. But imagine if it's true that in one single day, your kids can knock on the door and create an emotional response, like a negative emotional response while you're working. Then you do go to the grocery store later after you complete your work and someone does cut in front of you and they do cause an emotional triggered response. Then you get into your car and you're driving home and someone decides like they're gonna not see the light or they're gonna get too close to you. And in the car, you have then yet another emotional response to someone that is triggering that program in you, right? You wonder where road rage comes from? (laughs) You wanna talk about like a triggered program right there. Humanity carries a significant similar set right, of programs, if I could line them all up, and I will, you could clear them one after the other, and your whole reality would change. In fact, humanity would change. Because once those programs are cleared, you will no longer experience it. So say, okay, you've identified the selfish program. I mean, now what you want to do is imagine what the rest of the world could look like without a selfish program right? Would you be able to identify someone else who is selfish if you didn't have that program? Nope, you would not. Or you would, and it wouldn't affect you. You're like, ooh, that's interesting, right? Goodness, such a different experience. But if you bought the program that you are selfish, you are going to be triggered up the wazoo into who knows what you might say. Like That's when words are said that are hurtful to others because you're not caring about them really truly you want to lash out at them because your little victim here who thinks someone else is being selfish they need to know it right they need to get that they're selfish because they're being selfish and they're sitting over there going what are you talking about lady i have no idea what you're talking about you're like they have no clue they might not carry the selfish you know, program, or they do. And that's a whole different conversation. But imagine, imagine knowing that you could identify your own programs. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about how you can like move those suckers right out. Because it's one thing to know it, right? It's one thing to receive 
the idea, let it land in your field that because you are embodied as a human, you are solely responsible for your reality. It is showing up in front of you as a physical representation of your brain. And if that's the case, the things that aren't working in your opinion are because there's something that you want and you can't have it. Now imagine seeing that street and at the end is the thing that you want. And you run into all these things that trigger your negative emotions because you're after this one thing, this vision, this target, this dream. And you keep stepping in a flipping pothole full of shit. It's not actually that that's stopping you. It's the fact that the program that you bought, and most often it's subconscious, is getting in the way consistently and so consistently that your emotions pull you right off your track. Incredible, right? So let's take a break. We're going to just sit with ourselves for a minute and, and really allow your mind to go to a place where you get emotionally triggered. And you get to see if you can identify that for yourself. Because let me tell you, once you do, you're unlocking your life in ways that you have never imagined. So that's why we're at the Crossroads to Awakening show, right? You get to see where you're at that crossroads for yourself in order to get somewhere or to choose a pathway. Because you can keep going where you're going or you can go somewhere new and experience something way greater. So I'm Wendy Pocket, your host, and this is the Crossroads to Awaking on Inspired Choices Network, where where else can you get brilliant things that are inspired, aside from on this network? (laughs) We will see you in just a moment. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? Professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now, because you're at the crossroads to awakening. This is the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Paquette. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspirechoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. (coughs) Nothing like taking a drink and choking (coughs) on your own break. It's so funny. (coughs) Excuse me. Okay, so talk about real and when you're live, it's great. Let's see if we can follow this through. You're going about your day, wake up in the morning. You get ready, you know, you get the kids all set up, you're doing all your thing, you're in your office. And you're working and you're in the flow and things are going, you're getting stuff done and timing's great. And all of a sudden you hear this knock on the door and you know that it's exactly what you didn't want, which is a disruption out of your flow. And you're so triggered and irritated and you know it's your kids so you're wondering like what the heck I told them not to go so you open up the door and you let them in and all they want is for you to get them a drink of water by this point you're stomping out there to grab them the drink of the water like slamming the glass on the door like I told you guys not to bother me in the meantime you're extremely triggered because now not only have you taken yourself out of your flow from your work you're now you've been unkind to your kids for something where they just wanted to probably have connection with you and have a glass of water and they put two and two together and that's why they did it but they didn't know that it was going to trigger you they were just being their sweet little selves so now you're back in your office and you got to reset yourself and keep going and you do first thing as you're moving through your time in your day, you realize, oh, you know what? It's lunchtime. I'm going to slip over to the grocery store, grab a couple of things, then I'll have everything ready for making dinner tonight. So you drive to the grocery store and in the grocery store, you're waiting in line patiently. You've got one little bag of stuff and somebody with a, a cart, big cart, pulls in front of you in the lineup, doesn't even see you standing in line with the six other people behind you, 
pulls up into the laneway and keeps going because they don't even look. And you're thinking, are you flipping kidding me right now? Like, really? Like, how selfish are they? They just don't even pay any attention to anything. Don't they know how the lineups work these days? Triggered again. Trigger number two, right? Same thing. Same selfishness in your mind. But now it's getting amplified. Okay, you wait, she goes in, you end up getting in another one, no big deal. But now you're just a little irritated and frustrated and a little bit teed off, you know? You get all your stuff through, you get in the car, you put your stuff in, you notice the time. You gotta hurry up, you got a meeting in like seven minutes and it takes you six minutes to get home. Hustling in the car, you get, you're driving down the street and all of a sudden you hit it like a yellow light. Should I stay, should I not stay? The guy in front of you doesn't go. You're like, come on, are you kidding me? Why would they not go? It's yellow, right? You're getting a little more frustrated. The light turns red, then green again, and you're off to the races. And someone beside you pulls out in front of you, like beside you and scares you. And you're thinking, are you kidding? Are people paying attention to where they're going? Like you're now in the flow of being irritated. It's only noon because one trigger amplifies, attracts the others to occur, right? They could be the law of attraction, if you like. But by the time you get back here, you've already set your cortisol levels high because now you're stressed out. So any flow that you are in, there's no such thing as going back. You're actually just coming back in, you're dropping your groceries in the kitchen, you're getting into your office and you're landing in your conversation. And it takes every cell in your body to get focused, to keep going. Whether you're in a flow or not, you're then you're in there and they happen to say something that amplifies that program. You know what? Your response to them would never be anything like you would normally be and you know it and you can feel it and you're thinking, oh, I'm just irritated. And then you, you know, don't want to tell them the story and their perception of you is what it is, but it's too late, right? You've said something you shouldn't have said and you can't really take it back while well, you can, but you know, it's already been heard. And on your day goes, imagine. Some days could be like that. You know, I know some people who have most days like that. Well, I don't know them personally anymore because if they were, I'd shift their triggers. But anyway, besides the point, some people have crappy days all the time. That's all they tell people about, right? And it's not really that they're having crappy days. It's that the program, whatever programs they bought layered on top of each other are looking that way. How frustrating would that be, right? I get it. I completely get it. And you are fully responsible as an embodied human on this planet. You are 100% responsible for everything that's coming up for you. Because I can guarantee the people that were on the other side of your trigger like bef- that caused it have no clue that they caused it. No clue whatsoever only you. Why? It's your program, right? It's in your brain. You bought it. It's inexistent and it is living and running all the live long day. Great. You're saying, Wendy, now what? Okay. So yep, I got some triggers. I don't really know what they are. I'd like to identify them. And like, how do I get rid of this crap? Right? How do I, you know, undo the programs or delete the programs? Well, here's the, here's the thing. When you get to the point of seeing that you're emotionally triggered, you get to notice what's happening, right? So kind of emotionally, like, I want to say energetically, take a step back, right, from that moment. Even give yourself a second and look at the situation and go, what were they being? It comes right down to that. What was that person being that, you know, when I say the kids knocking on the door, Jen was saying selfish. What was the, you know, happening when you were in line at the grocery store and you're thinking selfish again? And what was happening when you were driving home, right? You're going to get the selfish frequency or something else, maybe on the same day. It's going to continuously show up for you. And no matter where you look, you're not even going to know it or see it coming because it's a program that's always running. It's taking up valuable real estate in your brain where you could have open free space, right? You could even replace that with programs that are going to amplify your joy and amplify your peace. But right in this moment, you might be thinking, holy man, I must have a lot of programs because stuff gets crazy all the time and I get triggered all the time and you blame it on the 
circumstances of your reality. And it could maybe you're saying, okay, like I'm really irritated today. Maybe it's because of the election in the United States. I don't know, right? How many things can you use your brain to think about, to find a way to connect your emotional, your emotional experience to something, to give it validation? Well, maybe it's the election. Or maybe it's because I was frustrated or I didn't get enough sleep last night or I've been working too many hours or you know what? Whatever. <laughs> like list, The list can go on and on. The, the thing that you get to understand is it's your experience. You're the one that's being triggered. You're the one that's having the emotional response, right? And you're the one that's also trying to find something to hook it to. Are you trying to find a situation to hook the emotion to, to validate the emotion? It's most likely not that. It's the program and the program causes the trigger. And the trigger is what creates your imbalance. It it creates lack of flow, it creates frustration, irritation, all those things. So step number one, like, I guess in a stay step number one, the number one thing you get to do is identify that you're being uh, triggered by a program, right? If you can't own that piece of it, then there's no supporting you in this. There's no way you're going to move yourself out of the position where you can't see yourself having a any kind of an issue, because that can't be it. It's got to be someone else's fault, which is a victim stance, which 100% is not true when you're when you're responsible for your reality. There's no, oh, it's the election's fault that I'm in a bad mood today. Okay, so you know, your body is the election. Like, I mean, it's you that's having the response. The election has its own purpose. Its purpose isn't to irritate you. It's doing its own thing. Just like your kids, if they're knocking on the door, their purpose isn't to irritate you in that moment. They just wanted a glass of water, right? So owning the responsibility, the 100% responsibility in your reality will change everything. It will literally change everything. From there, you can identify the things that cause you an emotional trigger, cause you an emotional upset. Those things are 100% the limitations, the blocks, the programs that exist. And from there, you get to see the lie that you bought about yourself. That lie is the way of being that you're tagging onto the situation that caused your, your emotional response or your trigger, right? So identify the way of being. What was the lady being at the grocery store that cut in front of you that wasn't paying attention? You want to talk what comes up For me, underneath of all that, when you don't have that emotional trigger there, compassion, right? Feeling the genuine human compassion, it it pools everywhere when you don't have a trigger like that. Because you can then see it. Oh, you know what? That woman in the grocery store, she looked like, like she was having a bad day. Like she looked ragged, like you know, in distress, who knows what could have been happening? Like your, your compassion level goes up because you're thinking, you know what? I don't know other people's life and good, you know, I'm sending good love to that human because who knows, maybe they're, they have a family member in the hospital and they just found out and they need to feed their kids or maybe they need to bring them groceries or right. You don't know. So your level of compassion shows up big and strong and beautiful, but only when you're not triggered yourself can you be compassionate as a human, right? You can see the world for what it's actually being. You can see underneath all the things that are showing up for other people. And you can see what's truly possible underneath someone else's negative experience in the world. You can be standing right next to the person who's being triggered by the selfishness and go, "Mm, you know what, they might not be getting that. That person might be just having a not, not so great day. Or maybe something terrible just happened or maybe they're not feeling well right? That human compassion um, can be seen when you remove these triggers. So I'm just reading Jen's uh, comment in the uh, chat box here. It says, I'm not sure if it's relevant, but what about when your emotions are triggered by a loss or death or something like that? And it's weighing heavy on your hurt. Is that shiftable or is grief a different kind of program? So it, it is a different kind of program from that perspective, because what can occur is when your emotions are triggered in a loss of someone, then you're activating a different 
connection program that causes you to experience your reality in the perceived future differently, right? So then you're connecting to the losses of the human that's not going to be there. So is it shiftable? <sighs> yes, and why would you not wanna feel your feelings, right? Um, grief is a real true human experience and it gets to go all the way through your body. There's so many things happen when, when souls leave a body, right? For the people that they're connected with. If you lean into what my experience of our reality is, is if you're solely responsible, then that person's role in this reality for themselves and for you is, is complete, right? So you get to see their whole experience so differently. And my invitation would be to feel your feelings, if that's what it is. Really feel them and allow them to penetrate through your body and outward so that you can then send love and experience love over whatever vibrational emotions that you're triggering in yourself that get to be released. So it's a whole new conversation for sure. Um, and, you know, there's so many shows that we can talk into those things, right? Because the next, from now to the end of this year and on, I'm going to really lean into all these programs and what's possible and how we get rid of them. Because when the world, when the humans in the world understand that they're fully responsible for their reality and can shift what's not working and allow it to work for them, it won't even look like it's working. It'll just look like things are going so great. It'll look like that flow is something that you're in all the time because nothing will stop you. That's when our world gets to be in that peaceful, loving space and compassionate right? We move into a space of, of more joy. I, and not to use the word more, but we experience joy and peace and love and from a different perspective altogether, because there's not triggered programs running in your brain. And your reality is not going to bring them up for you. You're going to have an experience that is uh, free flowing. And if something does come up, you're going to be able to, when you get this, right, when you get how this works, you're going to be able to identify it call it what it is, realize it's a lie you bought about yourself, which is a program and release the program because it's not actually true, right? That's what a lie is, an untruth. So when you relieve yourself of the untruth, you are relieving yourself of the program, like deleting that program. And believe me, it's, it's as easy as it sounds. There are a few caveats to what would make that different. So we'll go into a break. And when we come back, I will speak into those caveats that would make releasing those programs a little more difficult, not because they're not, it's not a, a, a possibility, but when I land it with you, you'll get it. So let's walk into a break and we're going to talk about what's coming next. I have some really, really awesome things happening in my reality. We're going to talk into uh, what's like, I'm going to, share with you some of the programs that are coming out in my academy so that you can be a part of it. Some of them are going to be free, how to take the icky out of sales. Like that's fun, right? Because there's so many beautiful humans with these programs and coaching that can support other people. We get to take the icky out of the sales part so that you can serve more people. And you get to learn this technique so that you can change your reality because I'm one human and we get to get to all the humans. And so the only way that's possible is to have a community of people who are going to learn and share and be this work. So we'll be right back. We'll speak to that in just a moment. You can hit the commercial, Jen. We're good to go. If you could wave a magic wand and have your life be anything you wanted it to be, what would it look like? professional dancer, CEO of a multi-million dollar earth conscious company, a screenwriter with top billing shows, and ultimately have the boldness to move about the world without emotional blocks standing in your way, therefore having the confidence to achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what Wendy Paquette knows is possible for you. The first step is understanding why you don't believe it too, or why you do, and yet haven't created it. Put on your possibility goggles and join Wendy now because you're at the Crossroads to Awakening. This is the Crossroads to Awakening show with your host, Wendy Pocket. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. Now back to the program. Okay, so here's a couple of things. I'm just going to 
drop these in here. You can learn this 100% to identify what programs are showing up for you. You can also let them go just as easily. But the, the few things that I've noticed that won't allow that to occur as easily as I say it is when you have bought programs that it's not possible, <laughs> right? For you, this it's always what I run into. Oh, for me, it's not possible. I got, I'm a special case. I got a lot of crap happening and nothing ever works out for me. Like when you have all these bought programs of impossibilities for yourself, that's where you would find this work would be a little more stretchy, a little uh, more difficult than you would like it to be. Not because it's impossible, but because you've bought so many programs that things don't work in your life, <clears throat> excuse me, that you're creating a, a heaviness and a hardness about something that can be super simple. So that's where sometimes working with me um, will support you in that we can clean all those up and clear all those programs away so that you, you don't have them. Now imagine, okay, you get to be real with yourself about this. Maybe you have those programs that say nothing ever works out for me. Every time I do something, it doesn't work. Or there's so many of the programs that I've seen that once removed, you can't stop the things from happening that you want all the time. You got to be mindful of what you really want because when you decide you want something, you're actually going to get it. And there's nothing that's standing in the way. Remove the programs. Your field is wide open. You can have anything you want. So that's the beauty of this work. There, it's all possible. 100% of the time it's possible, right? And if you're finding it's not, then that's when we get to lean into that because it's not because it isn't possible. It's because for some reason you can't see it or your programs are so thick that you're not able to win at your life or change something, or it's not possible that you can do that. We just eliminate that program and then it becomes possible, right? Zeros and ones all over the place. We just get to shift the zeros and ones so that it works for you. That's how this 3D density, 3D dimension works here on this planet. One of the cool things about what I've been gifted is that I have the ability to, I cracked the code right? I cracked the code of the programs. So let's lean into what that looks like. So everyone can crack the code and that will launch us into 5D experience, right? So I can speak into it all day long, but it doesn't matter if you're not experiencing it. So let's get you there. Okay. You get to reach out, find me, come to my website, wendypocket.com. There's a contact page. Send me a message. Say, Hey, I want to work on stuff or, Hey, what do I do? Or, Hey, I'm stuck or, Hey, I have a block or nothing works out for me. Whatever your bullshit program says, put it in there because I can support you in deleting it. And let's keep your life going because you're only here for the only thing we know that we have limited time is in this body on this planet. And we don't even have the end for that. We don't know if we're going to be here tomorrow. We don't know if we're going to be here next week, next year, like in a decade from now. We don't know. Every day is a blessing. Every day is a gift. New moment. Every moment is a new moment. So make it the best one ever. And if you have things that are not working, let's lean in and get those suckers cleaned up so you can have things that are working because programs are created yes, all the time. And they can be uncreated and undeleted. And I'm 100% certain that we can find what it is for you and shift it so you can have everything you want. So find me on wendypocket.com, send me a message and let's get moving. Totally possible. So we're coming to the end of the show. It is absolutely my favorite time of the week. Every single week, Mondays at 2 p.m. EST time, Eastern Standard Time, where I get to deliver to you all the things that are possible for you. I believe in you. I know you're looking for things that you can have that are just for you to activate your life so you can have everything you've ever wanted and it's all possible in this holographic reality. There's nothing that you can't have, right? Just name it and then you can claim it and we're gonna get rid of those programs. They're gonna activate those things so that you can be screaming from the rooftops of how much fun you're having in life. So I look forward to seeing you next week on the show. Please come visit. I'm gonna just keep nailing this home every single week so that you can get it. And if you only listen to the show and never reach out, someday you're going to get it. And if you reach out, you never know what could happen. Your life could change in an instant. I'm Wendy Pocket, and I'm going to see you. Bye, everybody. Thank you for choosing to listen to the Crossroads to Awakening radio show. 
Wendy Pocket will return next Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We look forward to you joining us again. Until then, enjoy your journey and we'll meet you at the crossroads.